So now let's look at this um, case. So what do we have here? We first have a nonlinear relationship between our input variable x and our output target variable to predict y. Okay, so our uh, feature vector and our target scalar, vector, uh, scalar value. But just by looking at this, and if you know a little bit of maths, you can think, well, this function, I think that the relationship, just by knowing your data, looking at your data, you can, you know, try to fit a function that nicely uh, approximates all your data points. And you can see that this function is a, a, a sinus function, right? So in this case, if we look, if we plot the data, we might uh, find that a, a, a sinus function nicely approximates the data, the relationship between the y and the x. So in this case, what do you guys think about this? Is this linear or nonlinear? So this is nonlinear, right? It's nonlinear, and it's also non-convex, right? So this is exactly, this is the relationship uh, between our uh, input feature vectors and our target values in what we call the original space. So this is, you know, the original feature space. And these are our training samples. And here, if we write down uh, uh, the approximation by our sinus function of an input xi, what do we get? We get, because we know the function, right? 2 pi xi. So it's almost equal to this, right? So you can see that the relationship between the output and the input is nonlinear. Now, interestingly, and this is the key trick here, if you were to know what exactly, what is exactly the function that generates, you know, this relationship between your inputs and your outputs, let's say it's a parabola, it's maybe a sinus function, it's something, you know, like that you might, exponential function, for example, okay, then if this really is a, a good approximation. This function is a good approximation of your points, which means your points lie very closely to this uh, function. Then if you plot your f of x, so now you're changing your variable, your feature vector, you're creating a new feature vector, right, with using the generating function. If you plot the y against your, your f of x, you will get this nice linear relationship. And this is generally, this is true, and you guys can test it. So you can create many functions, and if your function, you know, approximates your point, then generally when you map your points to uh, a new space where you're taking as a new feature value uh, your f of x, your mapped point, okay, your transformed point, then this relation to the relationship between the fx and the y, the generating function of your data x, and the output, it will be linear. Okay? So in this case, what do you guys know this? If we find, if we are able to estimate or find the, a good tra transformation function f of transformation f, of our original feature vectors, so, so then we will have them mapped into a space where the output is linearly dependent on uh, the input, uh, the output is linearly depending on the input. So in this space, we have the transformed feature space, okay? So here, each point is f, of xi, which can we can denote now with fi. So this is our fi, right? A new feature. This is the transformed feature, the mapped feature into the new space using the generating function f. And the yi, what is yi here in this case? What is the prediction for this point? And remember that now we're back, we're having a linear model 
So our prediction will be, so good, FIW plus B. So you can see that the relationship between the YI and the FI, it's uh, now like it's, um, with respect to W, it's linear, right? So we're back to the linear model. So this is, you know, what we call a trick. It, like it's, uh, we call it the kernel trick. So we will learn more about how to transform the data uh, later on when we're doing kernel SVMs. But in, what I would like you guys to keep in mind that sometimes when you have a null, if you if it happens that you know what is the function that generates or approx nicely approximates the relationship between your inputs and your outputs, then if you use this function to create a new space then you can solve the regression problem linearly, okay? So here, this is what we call a knowledge-driven feature design because we have a, a prior knowledge about the data. So we say that this might originate uh, for our pro from, for, from our prior knowledge or assumption about the data distribution, okay? So here, each point, each sample can be viewed as a noisy observation drawn from a, a generating function or a, a generating function f. Why is it noisy? Because it's an approximation. So this bias actually you can think of it also as some noise e. Okay, in some models they use noise. Okay, so let's look at how we formulate this. So it's so simple. Now we have our new minimization loss function and remember guys we can also add our regularization term but in this case we don't have any regularization but we have mapped our original features into a new space. So these are the mapped or transformed features. So for each vector x, so xt here I'm just putting in I map it using f, so I have f of xt, which is a vector of the same dimension or same size. Okay, <coughs> great. So imagine if I have like we can have let's draw like another like a different scenario. So maybe I might have something like this. So in this case, it's very, you guys can see, it might be difficult to find the generating function. So I don't know, it might be something like, it's very difficult. So it might not be very obvious to find it. So if you cannot do that, right? And generally in a high dimensional space, you can't even see the functions. You can't see it. So here, uh, when I plotted it right here, it's just, you know, simple one dimensional case. But in a high dimensional space where you have many features, you don't know how your features look, like they're in relationship to the output. So you have D features, but each feature has a relationship to the target output Y, okay? So you have D relationships. So you can really visualize all of them, and they might map into different uh, so into different generating functions not just one so it's not obvious how to do this how to find the generating function if you don't have this prior knowledge about your data but luckily we say in um, generally in uh, in machine learning there is a way to transform your data into a space where it is linearly separable. So this is possible. And this is actually uh, using mathematics and linear algebra. So we can find what we call the mapping. We can find the mapping function. So this mapping function that we can call here maybe uh, phi. So we can, we, can, we can find it. We can construct it. We can build it. Okay. Uh, even if we don't have any prior knowledge uh, about the data, but this function can be driven or estimated from all those points, from the training uh, data, okay? So here, this is exactly the same problem we were solving. So first, we had two uh, parameters, W and B. So we write the compact form. We define our new loss function, right, with the mapped features. And we define our matrix F tilde, right? So we have exactly the same uh, problem to solve now using the features that are transformed in the linear space, okay? So to recap, we say 
a properly designed feature or set of features for linear regression provides a good nonlinear fit in the original space and simultaneously a good linear fit in the transformed feature space. So we have two things here. We have the original space, the relationship is nonlinear, but it also provides a good linear uh, fit in the transformed space. So this, the designed feature or the mapping function phi that I also called f, okay? it is a good fit. So remember, this is all approximation. We're approximating, okay? So we're fitting, we're still fitting, but in two different spaces, in a nonlinear space and in a linear space. Okay, so this is what I just said, so let me just go over it quickly. So just because we can visualize um, a low-dimensional regression data set does not mean that we can easily design a proper feature transformation F by I just by looking in a high-dimensional space. And it also, it might not be be obvious how to formulate a proper feature f of x to recover the original data generating from the function because we don't know which function actually fits the data or approximates it, okay? And also, when we have a high dimensional feature vector, we have many features, right? It's even harder to see which features, what is the relationship between each of those features and all of them together with the target output. Great, so this is an, a nice example uh, where we have, this is a classification example, so we can, you can see that we can find the mapping function uh, to transform our classification problem in the input space. In the input space, you can see that the, the boundary or our classifier, the parameters of our model are nonlinear, they're complex, it takes time to find that boundary to separate, to, you know, like uh, separate the blue dots from the orange dots. But if it happens that we find this magic, nice mapping and we map all our point, uh, points on a, in a higher dimensional space, uh, we can see that all the blue ones become on top and the orange ones uh, in the bottom and we can easily separate them by a linear, like a hyperplane, okay? So this is, you know, this problem should be much easier to solve than solving the problem in the original space and trying to find a nonlinear fit or a nonlinear boundary separating these uh, uh, these two sets. So why this trick is good? So you don't use it all the time, but we use it to bring complex models right into simpler mathematical problems to solve more effectively and efficiently. Okay. Cool. Any questions? <laughs>